I thought we needed to have a chat about just kind of what we talk about here and why and how we, the general larger societal we, the we that I see on my social media and the echo chamber that I'm in, we justify spending our time and energy talking about Taylor Swift and the Met Gala and pretty dresses when people are literally dying Kim in a very big bad way um and the world is bad the world is bad for a lot of people and maybe even the majority of the people um and we have more in common with those people <laughs> than we do with the people wearing the pretty dresses and even taylor swift you know i i love taylor swift check out this channel um and you will see that i love taylor swift and i've loved taylor swift since i was a child and so loving her really is built into my personality like i have a very deep attachment to taylor swift as so many other people do um with other celebrities too she's not the only one people feel that way about i think people are just very loud about feeling that way about her but how do we spend our time and use our voice talking about these things when really truly we have more in common with the people who are losing their houses not to mention global warming when those aren't even the only things that are happening on that level that are bad when that's just the tip of the iceberg i'm not the one to be informing the world about those things and registering my opinion that's not you know who I am that's not my level of expertise necessarily I'm not a journalist um but I am someone who talks about much lighter artsier things that I love and that matter to me for different reasons that we will get into and so in this video I wanted to talk about how we you know justify giving our attention to those things and justify talking about those things during now I think it's easy to make the argument that things have never been as bad as they are now and I would I don't know it's hard to make blanket statements like that because I'm not a historian and so I'm sure if you were to go into history you would find times when things were pretty bleak but I think the bleakness of now just comes in different colors they're colors that were brought forth by you know that history and the history that we as humans have created that have brought us here and it's a new reality that we've never experienced before with new kind of pieces that we might not have had to deal with before and so it's kind of hard to make the statement if things have ever been worse before but it sure you know feels like that um despite a lot of things generally creeping towards getting better if you want to read about that and how things um in a lot of bigger picture ways are actually creeping towards being better in the world and like just infuse yourself with a little bit of hope definitely check out this book i really enjoyed it and you know i didn't do a met gala video not only because i feel like the met gala outfits kind of flopped um i just feel like the theme i get the theme and it made sense but i feel like people really just flopped in terms of the theme and then if you want to get into why people flopped in terms of the theme you kind of have to talk about well where are people getting their outfits and like what options do people actually have for their outfits and then you're kind of like feeling a little bit bad for people who like have the privilege to pay for a ticket to the Met Gala. Well, finding things to wear to award shows and events is actually like a big thing um, for celebrities. So it, because it becomes like having sympathy for those people, which is just really not um, the taste right now, um, which is why this TikTok kind of came off as tone deaf and not so great, even though a lot of other people were using the sound, um, etc. So is it worth talking about celebrity and the goddamn Met Gala and the Eras Tour. I am a huge proponent of the importance of art and the Met Gala at its core is a fundraiser for the Costume Institute of the Met and I do at the end of the day believe in the value and preservation and documentation of the history of garments and clothes and that work and their care and keeping and the work and effort of the people who partake in all of that. I value the work that goes into garments that people wear on the red carpet and at the gala and I truly believe that's an incredible amount of artistry um in and of itself however the question that's being asked is is the wealthy dressing up and going to a fundraiser or for that matter my favorite pop star going on a world tour the most important thing to be speaking loudly and publicly about right now well i suppose if you want the short answer to that very specific question um the answer is 
no, no, it's not. It's not the most important. The most important really could be, I'm sure you could parse it down to probably, probably 10. Um, maybe five if you really, really, really pushed um, through a group of people what the most important things are. Um, but then that begs the question, so are we just supposed to talk about the most important thing or the most important 10 things? Even that though, I'm not sure if we should all be talking about the most important thing or the five most important things because then that gets into performativity on social media and just saying things without knowing what it is you're saying just so that you can be seen as being on the right side by the people who you want to see you that way. We're all incredibly privileged on social media in some way to be removed from the things that are depressing us, but we're still clamoring to cope with how deeply unideal our world is and our lives maybe individually. And we all make choices to cope in different ways, um, whether we're aware of them or not. And a big, 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 big part of that is the entertainment industry. And that encompasses a huge amount of things because there's a huge amount of things that we use to comfort us and that we pay attention to just in order to distract us and give us something to hold on to as joyful and meaningful in a world that when we sit and we think about it too hard um, is really really deeply upsetting to us and maybe in a life that when we sit and think about it too hard is really really deeply upsetting to us. So you got to hustle for yourself and maybe you have the support of a family if you're lucky but other than that if you rely on others they will just come back to bite you and so we form community around things like shared interests in the arts and entertainment where it's not like we can really ask people for anything or let them down it's not quite the community um that i think we as humans would like and thrive off of but it's community without the physically present aspects of community in some ways. It's online community that makes us feel like we belong and that we have others that we can look at that are the same and whose realities, at least to us, are similar enough to ours to where we feel comforted by them because we're sitting there and we're talking about all of the same songs that we're listening to. We're all watching the live stream together. You know, that's why I feel like I have yet to go. Um, we're getting there, but I feel like people talk about what an incredible experience it is to be at the Eras tour because the feeling of a bunch of people really coming together in positivity for something in a non-aggressive, in a non-threatening manner, just in a truly joyful manner together for something is so rarely seen. And so being there and being in that and having everyone feel like they're there for the same reason and to have a good time and they're all listening to this song that we all love, that's something that like hits really hard. You know, that's a really magical thing to feel like you have community nowadays and online and over these um, seemingly frivolous, you know, pieces of media and celebrity culture focused things is one of the only ways we know how to reliably and consistently do that now. And it also doesn't take a lot of time. We are so incredibly time poor that hopping onto something that you already have to be on constantly for work to make money, the computer, your phone, whatever, in order to find some comfort, see a TikTok from someone that you like about the last Sarah's tour show or whatever, and like feel and be reminded that you are a part of something that you feel connected to when a lot of times you might not feel connected to a lot of the things you have to do in your regular life because they are in service of keeping your life afloat and making you money. They're not there because they matter to you. And so the things that matter to you really do take place alone and then you find connection within these communities to make you feel less alone. So when we ask ourselves, you know, why do we spend so much time talking about these things? Why do we give these things so much attention? For that reason, I don't think it's wrong. On the other side of the coin though, is it still something that is presented to us by those with, to those without, as a facade and a distraction from the huge gap in reality and well-being that is happening between the haves and the have-nots, the withs and the withouts? Yeah, yeah it is. It's absolutely a facade and a distraction 
from that and something that just keeps us you know ignoring huge gap in the stability and well-being of the people on this planet and even ogling at it um in this weird way and trying to use that to get through every day yeah it absolutely is and that's kind of terrifying it is entertainment but entertainment is a funny thing because it does have value of its own in some ways i simply do not have room in this video to get into the inherent value of art. But essentially what I'm trying to say is while we hold this, what I'm saying about the entertainment industry, I also want to acknowledge that the entertainment industry, a lot of it is art. You know, we enjoy film, television, music, etc. Um even like drawing and design things from artists like this is art um and even clothing fashion shows you know this is art we enjoy these things we gobble them up um and part of the reason we do that is for the community reasons that i mentioned before but also because of the inherent value of art um we love art because it makes us feel something it touches something within us and there's a whole philosophy behind the value and the meaning of art which is why i end up getting a bachelor's of fine art degree because that's something that i deeply believe in is that inherent value and so that's kind of what i was trying to say here um, the sinister part comes from what the entertainment industry has made of making art in our society the art itself is not sinister but the way that they tell us that these people are special and that they are more than us and we spend all of our time trying to be them and trying to get those shiny things bodies that are unachievable and not ours and not even sometimes these celebrities and just reaching and spending all of our time moving towards and paying attention to those things instead of the fact that we don't have health care the fact that there is going on the fact that people's houses are being burned down the fact that we live in a country with an enormous amount of wealth but also an enormous amount of unhoused population that's the part that's sinister and so that's the part that makes you wonder hmm is this what i should be putting on the mic but how do you have one without the other and that's hard because we live in a society. It always comes back to we live in a society. Is celebrity the problem? No, <laughs> wealth inequality is the problem, but celebrities are definitely a stoning post for that because they're the ones that, the ones with even more than them, show to us in order to keep us busy, in order to keep us entertained. The people causing the real problems aren't artists. <laughs> um, the ones making millions of dollars in their sleep, that's not the, the musicians and the painters and the actors and the models and the whatever. Um, those people are very quiet and you can Google their names. Um, but other than, you know, like Bill Gates, you probably haven't heard of them. And so when it feels like you're so powerless against those people, it kind of feels like maybe it's okay to watch the Met Gala in order to get through your everyday life. So when the question is, how do we do the heirs tour and talk about fashion trends in an era of the best answer that I have been able to come up with just for me myself is we try to hold our everyday life and sanity in one hand and the things we like in one hand and our care and our fight for the people who need it in the other, the individual, and the collective. And it's very, very hard to do that when our culture is hyper individualized and wants us to only focus on ourselves and everyone be a one woman show. Um, but we have learned that that is very much to our detriment. And so if we can find a balance between the two, I think that that's best for ourselves and our own sanity. 
um, just because the feeling of actually being able to help um, and being able to be part of a community is huge because we as humans are social animals and so it automatically feels really, really good, fulfilling to do that and makes us automatically feel like the world we live in might not be burning to the ground even though it might be. Finding ways to feel like a part of the collective and like you are working for the better of the collective while still balancing that with what you need to do to take care of yourself and what you feel like you can actually um, affect change in. And that doesn't mean, you know, stopping a war on your own. That means looking around you with where you are and what you can participate in and be another person um, and, and be another body at, you know, that is helping and that matters around you. Activism, I think, is a much larger thing and a much larger picture than a lot of people think it is. And spreading information is absolutely important. But when it comes to feet on the ground and bodies there, I think a lot of people don't realize that the change you're trying to enact is not for you. Um, it's for something bigger. It is for a larger systemic change that's going to take a very, very, very long time. But being one of the many and being a consistent one of the many is how the many grow and how you feed hope. And hope is a major, major, major coping mechanism and one of the few very powerful coping mechanisms that is almost entirely not controlled um, by someone else trying to make money. It absolutely is. People monetize hope all of the time. But when you create it for yourself and you create it with a community that you feel is genuine, it comes from a very different and very powerful community feel fueled place. You know, maybe you do go to the Ares tour and you buy some Taylor Swift merch. I'm doing both of those and I'm talking extensively about both of them online and creating more content that is filling up space on those topics. But I'm also trying to stay informed about the things that matter to me and ask what realistic action I can take on the things that I care about, regardless of what, if any, actual big change I will see. I'm not sure if any of that um, made any sense or was meaningful to absolutely anyone, but I really, 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 really did want to get this all out, make this video. Um, I do not just think about and consume things that have to do with clothes and fashion and pop girlies, but that's absolutely the content that I put out here and that is what I talk about here. And so I wanted to acknowledge that that feels like a weird thing to do right now and like a weird choice and it has for a while to be honest. And so I had thought about it for long enough and I wanted to speak about it because I'm not the only one I know who makes and consumes a lot of unimportant content um, right now or content that seems unimportant right now. But for whom that unimportant content does definitely keep me sane in some ways. Um, and that's a huge privilege to have that situation for someone for me to be able to not only make, but also consume this unimportant content. Um, it's a huge, huge, huge privilege. And you know, that comes with discomfort of its own. And it's just a conversation that I've seen a lot of people having right now. And so I wanted to talk about just kind of how I've been working through it and framing it for myself and see what you guys think as well. Um, we will be back to fashion and tailor content in the next video, we're going to be window shopping at Lisa Says Ga in our next video. I'm very, very excited um, for the summer looks. So thank you guys so, so very much for being here and watching this kind of like discussion um, video. I do these from time to time. If you, I feel like I've gotten a lot of subscribers recently from my Taylor Swift content. Thank you so very much for being here and for watching this video. If you have any thoughts on this topic, feel free to let me know. I, this is kind of like a thing that has been going around and swirling in the last couple weeks. Um, really since the Met Gala happened. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you so very much for being here. It's really loud in my apartment right now, so I'm gonna go. Feel free to subscribe, like the video if you made it this far, and I will see you in the next one. Mwah.